Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're gonna to look at RAID on macOS Mojave. Let's look at it right now. So as you know, my name is Emilio. I work in the IT industry, and today we're looking at RAID on a Mac. So you've probably got a Mac if you're watching this video, and you wanna set up some sort of a RAID across a number of disks. So essentially what RAID will let you do is you can have one or more hard drives or USB sticks, combine them together to create a bigger disk, or you can combine them together so that you have one disk if it fails and the other one still contains the data. So you actually have redundancy on data. So you can do this quite easily on the Mac. Now what I've got here is I've got three USB drives plugged into the Mac. Now they don't have to be the same size. Uh, they can be uh, you know, external hard drives, large external hard drives of the terabyte, one, two, three, four, five terabytes big. Or you can also have a mixture of simple USB thumb drives, like your standard small ones, maybe they're you know two gig, something like that. They're not too big. Um, but what we've got here is we've got three of them plugged into the Mac. So these are three USB devices into the Mac, and I'm gonna create some different RAID type of volumes on here. Now, I've logged in, and I wanna go to Spotlight on the top right corner and look up Disk Utility and open this up. So you can access Disk Utility by going into the Spotlight, or you can also access it through the Finder, Applications, Utilities, and the Disk Utility is in there as well. You'll see once it's come up here, I've got my three drives. I've got a Toshiba, another Toshiba, and then a SanDisk, all right? So let's just move these over here so we can see them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a RAID. Now, it's always good practice to go ahead and you know make sure that you don't have any data on these disks beforehand. On any of these uh, drives that we're gonna be setting up a RAID, all of the data will be lost, okay? So you wanna probably go through one by one, open them up, make sure that they're all clear. Oh, this one's got some data, so let's just go ahead and clear it. All right, make sure that there's no data, there's no data, etc. You could also go into each of the disks and select arrays and then erase the disk altogether so it'll format that disk and clear it out. Uh, but make sure that they're all empty, right, before you really go and do anything. From here, we go into the file area and into RAID Assistant, all right? So under Disk Utility, you got File, RAID Assistant. Now in here, you'll see that there are different options around the types of RAID that you can configure and create uh, on your Mac. Different RAID types can provide different levels of data protection or performance as it states. So there are three different types of disks here. We've got striped, which is a RAID zero. Essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna split the data evenly across two or more disks without a parity of information with speed as the intended goal. So this is just going to grab all of your disks and create one big disk. All right, so if I look at this disk here, Okay, you'll see that this is 7.66, so let's say it's eight gigabytes big. This gig, this stick is 16 gigabytes big. And then my last one is also 16. So what I could do is I could combine these two disks together using a striped RAID zero, and it will create a big 32 gig disk on my RAID but there is no redundancy. That means that both disks, both USB drives have to be plugged into the Mac at the same time to be able to use that RAID. If I unplug one of those, you can potentially lose data and you break the RAID. So data is spread across everything. So the data from a data perspective, it sees one big hard drive, okay, it's instead of two. So if one, if one of the disks dies, you've lost all of your data. So just keep that in mind. Mirrored RAID one. So this is an exact copy of a set of data or two or more disks. This type, of, this type is useful when read performance or reliability is more important. So what this is gonna do is I'm gonna create a RAID, for example, RAID one across these two disks. We know that they're both 16 gig. In this case, we're gonna have the sizes to be the same. So once this is finished, you'll see on your hard drive, on your finder here, you'll see one hard drive, okay, one disk. Uh, you copy data onto that, and in the background, it's actually going to be copying the data across both of them, all right? You won't actually see this because you'll see just physically one, but it'll copy the data across both. So if one of those disks dies, 
you don't lose any data. If the other disk dies, you don't lose any data, you, as long as you've got one of those disks up and running. And then the last one is concatenated, or a JBOD, which is just a bunch of disks. So disks are not arrayed, it is just a group of disks connected together for the purpose of creating a larger disk. So let's go through one of these. So let's just go through RAID 0, which is a striped. So we see that there are my three disks here, an 8 gig, a 16, and a 16. We're gonna go and create a 32 gig volume by selecting my two Toshiba USB drives. All right, when I click on next, you'll see that now the capacity has calculated it to be just under 32 gig big. So it's gonna grab those two disks and just create a big disk. I can call this whatever, big disk, 32 gigabytes. The format, Mac OS extended or the new APFS format. You'll see that it's a RAID 0. It can leave chunk size as the default. Okay. Next, so it's going to create a RAID 0 based on these two disks here. So we can now say create. Now before I do this, just to confirm, if I right click on one of these, you'll see that it's 16 gig. If I right click on one of these, you'll see that it's 16 gig. So now we're going to go ahead and create that RAID. So it's just unmounted both of those disks. It's now creating the partition map for these disks. And once this is done, you'll see that only one disk will show up on our finder, on our desktop here. And that will be a complete 32 gig disk. Okay, so that has now completed the RAID. You'll see that it's got a nice big tick. Your RAID has been formatted, is ready to use. And you'll see that here it is, big disk 32. So we can just click on done here. All right, and if I now right click on this one, you'll see that it now so it shows me 31, so 32 gig, all right? Uh, so from a Mac OS point of view, it sees it as one big disk, but in the background, it really is two disks, right? Two Toshiba disks in the background. I can easily delete this RAID by going into in my disk utility. You'll see here are my two disks, right? These two are the original ones. And this is the RAID set. You'll see that it's made of my two disks right here. And I can just delete my RAID and that will delete all the data on those disks and restore that to two individual volumes. And I can just say done on that. I can just simply erase them now and they will be restored back to their normal state. So those disks are now uninitialized. So really they're not gonna be usable And then you'll see that both disks are now fully restored and mounted back onto my desktop. All right, I can then go and create another RAID. So let's just create a mirrored RAID, okay? Next, very similar to before, I can create both of these. Okay, I can also set a spare as well, which is nice. So I can set one as a uh, essentially a spare in case one of them fails, I've got another level of redundancy. So we're not going to create it on this case, but you'll see that the capacity now says 15.84 uh, or 16 gig. So it is using two disks, but instead of before where one disk would fail and then you'd lose everything. In this case, if one of the disks, one of the USB drives fails, you don't lose anything because it's actually mirrored across both of those hard drives. All right, nice and easy. You can click on next and then finish off and it'll go and create that and it'll appear as one single volume that is 16 gig big but in physical form, it is two disks. You need to have both of those connected to your Mac to be able to utilize that function. And then you've got concatenated, which uh, is really just those bunch of disks that you'll just sort of use together to create a larger disk. Um, it's not really considered RAID, so we're not gonna cover this one necessarily, but similarly, you can go and experiment with different size of disks and see what you can get out with this. But really, in terms of RAID, you've got RAID 0 and RAID 1 on the Mac. Um, if you do move into more of an enterprise environment, you've got other sorts of RAIDs. You've got RAID 5 and 6 and RAID 10, RAID 50. Uh, there's a lot of other different sorts of RAIDs for different purposes. But on the Mac, you really are going to use either RAID 0 or RAID 1, which is a fantastic feature built right into the Mac. 
So that is my simple overview of RAID on the Mac. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would love it if you commented below. Let me know what you thought and uh, give me any feedback. Uh, it does help me grow my video and know how you guys are going. So we will talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, just on the button there for more videos.